Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am finally going to share my birth story with you guys. So if it's your first time here, a little bit of a backstory. This is my second birth, my second labor. The first time around, I was supposed to be doing a totally natural birth, unmedicated, in a birth center. I was like doing all the crunchy stuff, trying to be as natural as possible. And unfortunately, I ended up having a C-section. And if you want to watch that vlog, I'm going to be posting that next so you guys can understand the backstory to this one now i will link it in the video and you can also find it on my channel it's a really good video very emotional so make sure to watch it but anyways i ended up having a c-section so because of that this time around i decided okay i want to try a v-back i still want to be able to have a successful vaginal birth so i found a doctor who is well known for doing vaginal births and uh, has a very high success rate so i've been preparing for that and here i am today my due date was july 9th so as i was approaching my due date I started seeing a perinatologist because it was looking like my son was going to be really, really big. They were projecting him to be nine pounds, 13 ounces. This was like uh, maybe like five days before my due date. So I was then faced with the decision, do I want to deliver this baby on my due date, like with an induction? Do I just want to wait it out and let my things happen naturally? Because you know, the predictions are not always accurate. But once they told me nine pounds, 13 ounces, I was like, oh, absolutely not. Based on my history, I've had an unsuccessful vaginal birth. I have, uh, you know, had a C-section. I went through all the pain. And honestly, I think I was pretty traumatized by my last birth. So I'm like, I don't really want to risk him getting so big and i'm basically setting myself up for failure is how i was feeling so two days before my due date my due date is july 9th so two days before my due date was july 7th i spoke with my husband my doula my midwives and i decided that i was going to do an induction we are currently headed to the doctor for me to get induced uh, leia is currently at school so it's just me and lamar um and depending on how things progress i'll have you know my doula or not um this can be a six hour thing this can be days you know how labor is uh so we'll see my mom will also be coming over later so that we can have someone uh manage leia so yeah you ready <laughs> we're both like really chill this morning i don't know what's going on because i was having a v-back you can't just get induced like any typical way. So my option was basically doing a Foley bulb induction. And when they do a Foley bulb induction, that's when they stick a catheter up your vagina and you have like two balloons that they inflate. One is above your cervix and one is below your cervix in the vagina. They inflate, put pressure on the cervix and it basically forces your cervix to dilate. That's what I went in the office to get done. So there's no medication involved, it's mechanical. so. Like the good thing about it is that it puts pressure. You can go home and wait until it either falls out. It dilates you to like five centimeters. So you can wait until it falls out. Or if it doesn't fall out, then like the next day, like 24 hours later, you'll go back to the office and they'll take it out for you. I went to the office. I got the fully well inserted, which I was really scared about because I had read up on it and I was seeing so many things saying that it's so excruciating, so painful. Some people said it was worse than labor. So I'm like, what is this about to feel like? But they put it in and it was nothing. Like, I mean, for me, it really wasn't that painful. And I'm grateful for that because I mean, who wants to experience pain? I don't know, like my body feels nervous. Like I don't feel nervous in my, like I don't feel like I'm nervous. Like I'm not nervous to get it inserted. <clears throat> and I'm not nervous about what's to come, like the contractions, but I don't know, like in my body, like I feel jittery and just, I don't know, like that funny stomach and he goes to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Life turned. Yeah, but that's the thing, I'm not even thinking about that. I just feel nervous on the inside, but not mentally. It's just like a, my body reaction, like my body knows what's gonna happen. Yeah. I guess they're gonna monitor the baby while they do it. Oh, it's Well, no, check on it. Yeah, that's what these waistbands are for right here. They're gonna, one's to monitor my uterus and one's to monitor the baby's heart rate. So they put it in, that was fine. The cervical check for me was the harder part. And with the cervical check, they were saying that like I was, the baby was still high. I was one centimeter dilated, like minus two, minus three station, like 60% effaced, but my cervix was soft. Basically, I didn't really have a very favorable cervix. Like it wasn't like, oh yeah, you about to go on labor. So that was a little discouraging, but I knew that the Foley bulb will help me get there. 
so we've been here for like maybe an hour and a half it's been inserted i had these on because they're doing a, a mst a non-stress test just to make sure that he's tolerating the foley insertion i have started having contractions i don't know how often or anything they're like mild in relation to how bad i know contractions can get um but they are like you know they make me i don't want to talk when it happens i just want to breathe and then i'm fine it's really not that bad at all right now i think that i'm having a contraction now you can see the numbers that 99 is representing my contraction you see clearly i'm talking and having a contraction it's really not after they put in the Foley bulb, they had to do a fetal non-stress test, which is basically just to make sure that the baby is tolerating the Foley bulb insertion well. I was on it for like one or two hours because they wanted to see my baby doing a little bit better. But anyways, all was fine. So I went home to wait it out and see how far it was gonna get me, the, if the bulb was gonna fall out or what. Oh, so like I started feeling contractions like 30 to 45 minutes after they inserted the Foley bulb, but it really wasn't like that painful. It was like, I could breathe through it. I can't even talk through it. Yeah, so I went home and I was pretty much consistently having contractions throughout the day, but they were very mild. I wasn't really able to nap through it initially, but eventually it got better. And by the time it got to nighttime, I was able to go to sleep. But while I was home, it's like I continued to have contractions, but they sort of fizzled out by the end of the day and they were like less consistent. So I was like, oh my God, I need to get things going. So I started, I did curb walking. I was doing uh, lunges. I was doing squats. I was doing like ball work where I was like making my hips go side to side, all kinds of stuff because I'm like, this baby needs to come. Like I'm not trying to waste time. But then again, I know that when you're getting induced, you know, the time for birth can be dragged out and be much longer. So I ended up going to sleep that night. I was able to sleep good, I was well rested and the morning came, the bulb never fell out. So I'm like, okay, either I'm not to four to five centimeters and so it's still in there or I did get there, but it just never fell out because sometimes it doesn't fall out. Good morning, everyone. Today is day two. It is Friday, July 8th. So it's been just about 24 hours since I've had the Foley balloon inserted. It did not drop out for me. So I'm going back now for them to remove it. And I'll also find out how much I dilated with the balloon in. As far as how things have been going, I, I've like ever since I got the balloon in, I've been contracting on and off. Well, consistently, but they've been like irregular. I'll have regular contractions for like an hour or two. Then they'll fizzle out, get stronger, get weaker. So they've been all over the place, but I have consistently been contracting uh, since I got the balloon in. Other than that, like not much action, like no bloody show, no, no bloody show. Bloody show is like, it's like this little, you know, you have your cervix, a cervical opening, and there's like a plug there of, of mucus that is a barrier. But as your cervix dilates, the plug is now loose and it falls out. Yeah, so none of that. So we're gonna go in and see. And I've been thinking, I've been thinking a lot about my birth and like how I wanted to go. My plan going in has been, has always been, uh, I want to do it as natural as possible, unmedicated, no epidural, things like that. But I don't know, I'm just, it's, it's probably speaking out of fear, but this morning, I just, I felt like I want to just have the most positive birth experience possible. Whatever they may, that may be, however that may be. So I went to the office to get it taken out. On my way there, you know, I had been thinking about the birth a lot and I'm like, you know, is the bulb gonna fall out? Like, this is about to come, this is happening. Like we started, it can't go back. And I just really started feeling like, I just want at the end of the day to have a positive birth experience, whatever that is. And I guess my fears were getting the best of me, but I was just kind of telling myself like, you know, whether epidural, no epidural, natural, non-natural, C-section, vaginal, I just want to have a healthy baby and a positive birth experience. So I was talking to my husband about that and just like trying to make sure that I go in with the right mindset because that's really important. You have to have a good mindset and just be set on i shouldn't say set but just like know what you want going in i, I think that's really important so anyways i get to the office they take out the foley bulb foley bulb and i'm four centimeters so i was extremely happy to get that because it was pretty easy getting four centimeters like my contractions were never really that bad and the in foley insertion wasn't that bad so like it was it was good so i was four centimeters but the baby was still high my i still wasn't that a face i don't remember what i was but 
you know, my body still needed time. So with the Foley, when you take it out, either your body will kickstart and go into labor itself, or you need to go to the hospital and they'll have to push you on Pitocin. So I was trying to go the natural right route and I was honestly scarred from my last birth of like any interventions. So I was like, okay, let me go home. Let me try to labor at home and see if my body will kickstart. So I'm home, I'm like, I'm at it again. I'm like walking, lunges, ball work. I mean, I was so desperate this time that I was doing like inversions, forward leaning inversions. So I'm literally like upside down in my living room for like 10 minutes, blood rushing to my head because I wanted to get Mello in the optimal position. I was like, it, maybe if I get him engaged better, I will start to dilate and my body will kickstart labor. But nothing was really happening. So nighttime came around and I had talked to my midwife because I was like, okay, so what's the plan? Today's Friday, you know, if I need to go induce, like what's gonna happen? Induce as in like getting Pitocin going to the hospital. So they were basically telling me that I'll probably have to wait till Monday to go in because it's the weekend. They don't schedule inductions on the weekend. I'm like, are you kidding me? This is, I would have never got an induction if I had to wait till Monday. I could have just let my body naturally go into labor on Monday. Like that's a whole like five days for him to just get 10 pounds something and definitely not gonna be able to push this thing out. So I was like, well, you know, whatever. I'm just gonna go with the flow. So by like 8, 9 p.m., like the contractions really started to kick in. They were getting more intense, more frequent. And I'm like, oh, these are contractions. So before I was like, is this Braxton Hicks? I'm not sure what it is, but these were contractions. They were painful. I had to like sit and like, I didn't want to talk through them. It was just, you know, like bearable, but very uncomfortable. So I called my doula. I'm like, I don't know. I think this is, I'm starting to go into labor. So she was like, okay, just go in the bathtub, see how that works, see if it improves and we'll go from there. So I get in the bathtub, things did improve, but I was still working through the contractions. They slowed down, like instead of every three minutes, they were like every four minutes, um, but still painful, but I got some relief from being in the bathtub. So I was in there, I'm trying to breathe through my contractions, you know, find the right position, all this kind of stuff. And I was like, you know what, Lamar, I gotta go. <laughs> I'm, I'm not about to do this. Like next thing you know, it's gonna be one o'clock in the morning and we're gonna be trying to get to the hospital I meaning excruciating pain. The last thing I wanted was to be driving in a car in the hospital, like dying of pain. So I called the doctor and I'm like, I gotta go. So they luckily said that they were able to find a room for me. Oh, cause I didn't mention that the hospital was full. So that was part of the problem about getting me in. But anyways, they found room and I went to the hospital. And so by this time it had been like 13 hours since they took out the Foley bowl. And I had been having mild contractions all day. At that point, as you know, I was having serious contractions. So I'm like, all right, I can't take these, this pain. It was so bad. They wheeled me in the hospital and I'm like, oh my God, just get me to the room. I'm in so much pain. Like I just wanted to be in a comfortable place, you know? They wouldn't let me walk. Like I had to be rolled in the wheelchair, like a handicapped person to get to the, uh, room. So anyways, I get to the room and I'm like, I just, I had a moment with myself and I was like, I'm in pain right now. And I just need to know how dilated I am. I told myself if I'm less than six, I'm getting an epidural. I <laughs> like, I'm not doing it. If I'm more than six then good, that means my body's working. It's working pretty fast and I can do this. So they come in, the nurses, they check me and they tell me I am four to five centimeters. So after taking the bulb out after 13 hours and having those last like three to four hours of a lot of pain, I literally progressed to nothing. I was the same thing I've been all day. So I was like, nope. No, I'm not doing it. I am getting an epidural, give me an epidural. And I know it's like that totally went against my initial birth plan, but I felt so solid and secure in my decision. I guess because earlier that day, I made the decision that I wanna have a positive birth experience, whatever that means. In that moment, I was like, I was feeling the pain. I was feeling, I would, and I just remembered how my last birth was. And I was like, I don't want to go through this. I don't want to go through this and possibly end up in a C-section. So give me the epidural, give me the epidural and let me chill until this baby comes. So I asked him for it and I told my doula, I'm sorry, because basically once you have an epidural, I mean, the doula can definitely support you, but I feel like their support is so big when you're doing it natural, like so needed. But anyway, she stayed there with me the whole time regardless. But I told my doula, I'm sorry, but I, I feel really good about my decision. <laughs> I'm getting this epidural. I feel very good about my decision. Okay. You're in control. So I asked for it, but it took like hours for me to get it because there was some scanning issues. They had to admit me, like all this stuff. But finally I got it and it was like, peace serenity, happiness, joy, like the best thing ever. It is July night now, it's Saturday. I got a 
don't know if you can tell, but um, I drugged up and cave in. Yeah, I got me epidural. I had, um, I started having uh, some in pretty intense contractions last night. And once I got to the hospital, they checked me and I was still four to five centimeters. So that means basically in like 13 hours, I made no progress and was having contractions. So I just made a decision to get the epidural. I don't feel bad about it at all. I think the most important thing for me is to have a positive birth experience. And this epidural, I, I believe is like the start of that. I don't wanna have this long, strenuous, drawn out, painful, excruciating labor. And I feel like that's where I was headed again. So you see me, I'm chilling. <laughs> so they checked me again this morning. I'm like a solid five but I'm fully effaced, so I'm like 90% effaced and minus two, one or two station, I forgot. So, and he's engaged, so that's nice. It's really good that he's engaged because he's been high up for a long time. So I had the epidural and um, that night, they didn't do much the doctor was gonna come see me in the morning. I didn't like sleep that great, but I was able to chill out and be calm for the most part overnight. So in the morning, the doctor came and checked me, or the midwife came and checked me, I should say. And it was like eight o'clock and I was about five centimeters dilated. So then we were talking about, okay, what's the plan? Do I want to get induced? Because the, where she last left me was no epidural. I don't want to get induced. I'm scared of, the, of breaking my water. I'm scared of getting Pitocin. But basically everything went out the window. Because once I got the epidural, I'm like, you can do whatever you want. You can break my water. You can give me Pitocin. Like, let's, <laughs> let's do whatever. I don't feel nothing anyways. So at that point, they were like, okay, well, you're five centimeters, like a solid five. So... Like I still barely even progressed. So they were like, okay, you're a solid five. The next thing would be to break my water so I can get that head engaged and really put pressure on the cervix to get the contractions going. And they're gonna start me on Pitocin so that can help kickstart my contractions as well and have them like more regular. Cause I wasn't, they had, my contractions kind of fizzled out too. I didn't mention that. So by nine o'clock I was on Pitocin and my water was broken. So my contractions were, you know, beginning to come stronger and more regular. And so from then on, I was like having a lot of uh, leaking of fluid with, with the contractions. I would just like try to nap every now and then and I was doing a lot of position changes because although I had the epidural, like I was still able to move my body. My, I think my left leg was super numb, but I was still able to move. So we were just like waiting it out at that point, just, you know, going through the motions. So then 11.30 came and I started, this is about two hours later, at about 11.30, I started feeling some discomfort. I was like getting the jitters and shaking, like my whole body was shivering. And you know, we can continue to do position changes, but I knew that the my body shaking is a response to labor. And so that was a good like, sign that I, I was feel, getting closer. It hurt. I had these weird, like this weird constant gas pain type feel in my lower abdomen. And like, I'm getting like the jitters. They just checked me and said I was seven or eight, I think. And he's lower. And what else? Maybe fully your face. She, I don't know. She said I'm super stretchy. I don't know, but we're getting close. So they checked me and I was seven to eight centimeters only two and a half hours later. And then um, I continued to labor. We started doing even more position changes so that we could help bring the baby down. All these position changes were in bed. So I was like on all fours in bed at one point. I was left side with the peanut ball, right side with the peanut ball on my back. It was pretty much like rotating between those positions. So then I started getting like this gas pain, stitchy feeling in my lower right pelvis. Like it was really low though. So although I had the epidural, I couldn't kick that pain. And it was just uncomfortable, nothing like labor pains, but it was it was definitely there. And I'm like, what's wrong? And I started getting scared that it was like a rupture or something because it was a very, like a pinpoint kind of pain down in my lower uterus. And that's one of the risks of a VBAC is uterine rupture. Even though I didn't really think that's what it was, but it did come to mind and I did mention it to them and we just watched it. But anyway, it didn't turn out to be anything. So so I had the stitch feeling and then I vomited. So when I vomited, I was like, oh yeah, like we're really about to be there because that's like a really good sign that you're really about to like go into labor. Once again, just going through the motions and then around uh, two, no, like 1.30 they came and they were like, you're like 
almost there. Like there's just like a, a little bit left to, of my cervix to go away. So I sat in kind of like an all fours position and like 30 minutes later, they came back, checked me. I was fully dilated and like ready to go. So the midwife came in and she was like, all right, so we're going to do some practice pushes and see how you do. But like, I really got the vibe that it was like, I'm not sure you're gonna be able to do this or that this is gonna happen. So we're just gonna push and see. And like, not that she wasn't being negative, but I can just I can just see it wasn't like, oh yeah, come on, let's get, like, let's get everything together. Like we wanna push this baby out. I could just feel the energy that it's like, okay, let's see what's gonna happen. Because although I was fully dilated, he was still high up and then they know my history. And then we were also predicting like a nine pound, basically a 10 pound baby. So um, she was like, all right, let's do some practice pushes. I'm like, all right, you know, let's do this. So I lay on my back. That's how I felt like being, you know, we did the whole lay back, one, two, three, push, whatever. And she was like, okay, these are great pushes. Like we're about to get this baby out. So that made me feel so good. Cause I was really nervous that I was going to have, you know, an unsuccessful vaginal birth. So we're like, all right, like we're going to do this thing. So now they got the nurses, they pull the table up, you know, they do all the prep, which they didn't do before. So now that they saw the effective pushes, they're like, all right, let's do this. I was sitting there pushing for like 45 minutes, an hour, which she had told me is probably going to happen because it's not like the baby's head was crowning. The baby was high. And so he needed a little help being pushed down. So that's what that whole 45 minutes to so an hour of pushing was doing. So I'm pushing, I'm breathing, we're counting three, pausing, waiting for the contraction and pushing again. Right before I pushed, my best friend had got there, by the way. So in the labor room was my best friend, my husband, my doula, and yeah, staff, you know. Anyways, so I'm pushing, I'm breathing, I'm doing all the stuff to get him down. And every push, like he's getting down lower, lower, lower. You can tell he's going good. They're like stretching my vagina out and putting like, oh, I don't know, just. <laughs> I guess they just trying to make sure, you know, I don't rip or anything. So finally they're like, okay, we see his head, we see his head. So they're like, do you want the mirror to help things come along? So I say, yes, give me the mirror. They put the mirror down there and I don't think I wanted the mirror. So like I looked one time, but then I don't know, it didn't encourage me. It was actually kind of like, I don't want to see it. <laughs> But it was fine. I left the mirror there, but I just stopped looking in the mirror. So I kept pushing and then you can feel the energy from everyone. Like the baby is right there. So that was like, I was feeling really good. Like, wow, this is really about to happen. So, um, you know, I kept pushing, pushing, pushing. So the midwife was with me. Then the OB came in and they were like, you know, working together as a team to get it done. I was in my last push and they're like, okay, you've got to push hard, like push hard, full effort, you know, really do good with these ones, like put it all in it. And it's like by now I had been pushing for hours, so I was getting a little weaker, but you know, definitely when they said that, I was like, look, I gotta find an in me to get this baby out. So um, I was pushing, pushing, pushing at the end and I can just feel him like coming down. Although I had that epidural, like I could still feel it down there. And then next thing you know, I just feel bloop, bloop. <laughs> how it sounded is how it felt. And he literally just like plopped out of me. And I was just, I don't know, in shock. Like when I felt that, it was just like, wow, I really did this. Like I just pushed out a baby. So they bring him out, they put him on my chest, which is what I wanted. And I was just like in disbelief. Like I really, really did this. I can almost cry now. I was just so happy to know that I successfully did it. Like you plan, you prepare, you think, you hope, but nothing is like it actually happening. So that was just, it was just such a fulfilling moment. You know, I have him on my chest and I'm just soaking it all up and the next Next thing was to cut the umbilical cord. So they asked Lamar if he wants to cut it. Lamar was like, no, I think by that point, Lamar was like, he doesn't want to see anything else that is remotely like just, you know, it's just, I think it was just like, he was just done at that point. So to read, so to cut the umbilical cord, I was like, well, Tariq, you can do it. So Tariq cut the umbilical cord. And then after that, they were like, all right, you got to push again. I'm like, wait, what? Which I was a nurse before, so I should know this, but I just was so in the moment. I totally forgot that I still have to push out the placenta. So I'm like, oh my God. So we push it out. That I was fine. But then the mirror's still there. So I'm like, okay, let me look at what's going on down there. Bad idea. It was like a big, bloody, gaping hole. I was like, oh, absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. So after that, you know, I'm laying there and the the OB is just sitting there and like stitching, 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 stitching. I mean, she was stitching for like, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes. So I'm like, mm, mm, must not be good. Between what I saw and how long they were stitching for, I'm like, can't be that good. So um, anyways, I ended up having a partial third degree tear, which is like from my vagina almost to my butthole, but like pretty much all the way there and kind of deep. So that's why they were stitching for so long. But yeah, so at that time though, I was still like numb. So I didn't really feel much, but I, you know, I didn't even care at that point. I was just so happy 
for my baby to be there, for my baby to be healthy and just to have a successful vaginal birth. So I was like, look, forget the tear. I'll deal with that later. So, you know, I put him on my breast. We started breastfeeding. And then the next question was, like, okay, how big is he? So um, eventually after we did like the skin to skin and breastfeeding, they took him to get weighed. And everyone is like, okay, I think he's this. I think he's that. Like, how big is he? Is he eight? Is he nine? And, you know, he looked healthy, like a good size, but we just weren't sure. So they put him on the scale. We're all looking, anticipating. And and he turned out to be eight pounds, seven ounces. What? I'm just like, <sighs> they were saying he was gonna be so big. His head is huge, nine pounds, 13 ounces. Like, and he came out to be eight, seven. So anyone watching this and being concerned about having a huge baby, like just know that these things can be off one or two pounds. Sometimes they are dead on, very accurate. Don't get me wrong. I could have waited to just go into labor naturally, although I have no regrets, like I'm perfectly fine with how things went. But you know, eight pounds, seven ounces, it wasn't that bad. But the reason that I tore, I forgot to mention, is because he came out like this. So he was already on the big side. His head was pretty large. And then he came out with his fist on his head. So not only did I push out a head, but then I have to add like this, this uh, circumference to his head. And that's pretty much like guaranteed you're gonna tear when you push out a baby like that. So there's that. But yeah, my big old baby. I just have big babies, it is what it is. But yeah, everything turned out good. I was so happy with the labor. It was a really good experience. And I was so elated. It was the best feeling. I, I, I couldn't have been happier. I really couldn't have been happier. I'm grateful for the experience. I loved it. I love all the support I had and I just, I couldn't have asked for a better experience. Tear and all, I'm, I'm super happy. I hope if anyone's watching this and you're, you're planning on having a V-back or you're having a big baby and you're nervous about how it may go, just know that anything is possible. Labor is super unpredictable and um, don't let your fears come over you. Just go with the flow. And the most important thing is to have a, healthy baby to have a, a positive birth experience so i hope you guys enjoyed and make sure to watch my next youtube video which will be my first birth so you can see the backstory to this and how that went it was just a really good birth story and then i'll be posting my postpartum experience as well so thank you guys for watching